So you don't want to be that kid, right? The kid that is the last one to get picked. You can be that kid, right? Or that kid, that kid, or that kid, but definitely not that kid. The one that looks the weakest. Have you ever been that kid that nobody likes to pick? You're like the last one. You're just hoping the gym teacher is gonna count off and say one, two, one, two, because you don't wanna be the last kid picked and everybody knows it. Everybody knows that you're gonna be the last one and you have to deal with the humiliation and you feel left out and you just don't know what to do next. See, in life there's a lot of times when we feel like we're left out. You know, I had a, a, a youth member one time and he came to our church to play basketball at our gymnasium because our gym was not attached to the church. Like, it was a part of the church, right? We had a gym away from the church. It was only like 25 steps away, but it was away enough that some of these kids who never been to church before wanted to come play at our gym. And I remember one time I asked him, hey, you wanna come to uh, Sunday night one night when we're just, you know, in the church and we're just hanging out downstairs, it's no big deal. You're not in the sanctuary or anything. And he, you know what he said to me? He says, no, I'll never go to a church because I'll be struck by lightning. You know, people feel like that sometimes. They feel like they're gonna stick out so much that they're not gonna be accepted maybe. Maybe that God's gonna strike them down with lightning because they're not accepted and not part of the group. You know, it's been that way for thousands of years though. You know, Jesus tells a story here in uh, Luke, and this is what it says here. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited a lot of guests, many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent out his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. Now Jesus, in, in this time, Jesus is telling this story to everybody and he's talking about a man who, who has probably had a lot of seniority, maybe a lot of um, a lot of power, maybe a lot of wealth. He's talking about a certain man who had servants, of course. So he he's preparing a banquet and everybody's expecting what's gonna happen next, that these people are gonna have a party. But this is not what happens. It says this, he tells the servant, go out and tell everybody everything's ready. And then, but they all began to make excuses, it said. The first one says, I've just bought a field, I must go and see it, please excuse me. Another one said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. So the servant went back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry. He got angry because he says, all these people I want to invite and nobody is accepting it. This person of high power expected, he's probably a little cocky and expected all these people to want to come to him. I know you guys love The Office, and I love The Office, and it reminds me of Cafe Disco. If you don't know it, check it out. It's where Michael Scott has an espresso machine and decides to make his old office that he used to have for his Michael Scott paper company and make it into a little disco, and a dance studio. And he has this big idea that everybody's going to come and party and nobody is there. He invites them, he tries to get them to come out there, but nobody shows up. And we are sometimes like that too. We, when we get rejected, we become angry, right? So this is what the, the, the person does instead, the master. So he got angry, right? And then he says to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. The master surprised the servant. He says, you know what? This party is ready to go and I'm ready to rock and roll with this party. And those people I invited to come, they're not coming. The people that ex I expected to be here. So the master invited all these people who nobody would expect to be at his house, at his party. He was well known. He had people that could have been rich, people that had power, but none of those people were at his party. It was the poor. It was the crippled, the people that you wouldn't expect. And Jesus told this story because he told them this to let them understand that everybody is welcome in his house. That you have Pharisees and Sadducees that dress a certain way, that are in that suit and have that tie. They have that chair up on stage. 
that makes them show that they have power and they may not be the ones at the party because you, you know what? They may have another excuse of why they're not gonna be there. And Jesus isn't interested in excuses. He's interested in those who really wanna be there. When it comes to a relationship with Jesus, he doesn't want fake people. He doesn't want people to dress a certain way or look a certain way, but he wants people to really wanna be there and really wanna be with him. And so that's why I wanna tell you guys this week is, in the story that Jesus told those who were listening, those who thought, I don't really belong, but really wanted to be part of it, he was telling them, you have hope. He was telling them, you could be part of this. Because you want to be here, that's why you're going to be there. Remember the thief on the cross? He asked Jesus to remember him. He wanted to be with Jesus. He wanted to be there with Jesus. And Jesus forgave him of his sins and says, tonight you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that awesome? I, I, I want you guys to read the scripture. Again, that's Luke chapter 14. Read it. Think about where Jesus wants you to be. Which, where's your desire at? Is it just to act like you're in church and act like you're doing all the good things, you're in your best behavior? You look the best for the part. You can, you can throw that dodgeball. You can throw those hoops. But when it comes down to it, you have no passion. Or are you that person that has passion? and you're just letting God lead you. Hey, I'm so glad you guys joined me again. Hey, we will talk again tonight. I look forward to seeing you guys on Zoom at 7.30 tonight.